moving on, I want to talk about quickly um, this stuff happening with Tim Dillon. I don't really know what's been going on. Somebody alerted me to it in the chat. So thank you in the chat for alerting me to it. But this guy that I've been following on um, YouTube called Too Lazy to Try, who does pretty good comedy roundup videos and stuff about people in the comedy scene um, in general and kind of does some good sort of like talk over commentary type stuff. The stuff similar stuff that I kind of do. Um, he's kind of entered the flipping conversation. He's been really good and kind of blowing up over the last few months, I feel like. And um, he's covering the same thing, sometimes more detailed stuff than I do, maybe more on time than I do also, way better edited than I, but just generally doing it pretty decent. And I guess he's been having an issue with some of his Tim Dillon videos, especially off of the back of, off of the back of, off of the back of, off of the back of the stuff happening with Ben. So Ben Avery, Tim Dillon's producer, left abruptly out of the blue and everyone was hypothesizing what happened, did Tim fire him, blah, 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 blah. And the fallout from it's been pretty you know shit to see especially somebody that's a tim dylan fan because the podcast has suffered um the ben everything looks like it could be malicious i'm not too sure uh ray Kumpf and tim the way they responded to it the day after recording that patron was horrendous you know what i mean they minimized his contribution took the piss out of him in general it's just horrible to kind of see them kind of operate and go on like that especially with somebody that's so integral to the show and now we're in a situation where it looks like tim doesn't like that certain people are calling him out for his behavior, how he acted toward Ben and the subsequent pods and all that malarkey. And he's now striking down their videos, it looks like, which is really weird, especially someone like a Tim, who's meant to be this free speech, anti-censorship guy, somebody that's against kind of like, you know, corporate entities coming in and giving people notes and taking over certain things and foreign powers and CCTV and being intrusive and all that malarkey is very much in that, right? So for someone like him to be abused in the youtube copyright system and striking down videos because he doesn't like what they say is pretty abhorrent i'm not gonna lie so i'm hoping what i've heard isn't true and it's a misunderstanding but let's see what too lazy has to try has to say about the whole entire thing all right so i'm sure most people have heard that there's been some drama going down with my channel and tim dylan and i wanted to wait a few days to make this video because i wanted to see if him or anybody from his team would respond to this but nobody has so far so here we go and I'm not going to use any footage or audio from Tim's podcast, so there's no way he could take down this video. So I'm sure most people have heard by now, the other day, Tim Dillon did a copyright takedown on one of my videos, and he gave my channel a strike, which is pretty- What video? Okay, the video he took down was- Tim didn't apologize for trusting his ex-producer Ben Avery. Pretty surprising considering Tim is very pro-free speech, anti-censorship. You know, he goes on Joe Rogan, he does the whole circle jerk talking about how bad censorship is and how big tech companies are out of control with deplatforming people and people are getting too soft and too sensitive nowadays. Yeah, good point. Someone made that too late to try about his voice. Yeah, too late to try is like Red Scare, Red Scare podcast for me. You have to get past his voice. Same with the Red Scare podcast. Once you get past the Red Scare podcast and their vocal fry and that kind of valley thing going on, it's a really good show, really entertaining. I love the ladies. So check out the Red Scare podcast if you haven't already. They're on Patreon. They also have a podcast that's free. You can check out Anna and Dasha. I love you. You guys do amazing work. But once you get past Too Late to Try's voice and his mon mon monotone, almost sleepy sounding voice, it's pretty decent. I think he puts together concise, really well done videos and I'm a fan of his. But now it's starting to look like he's just a grifter and a massive hypocrite that only cares about making money because he gets a little criticism from the internet and he does copyright takedowns and he gives out strikes. Like this is Brendan Schaub level stuff and I've never even had to deal with this from Brendan. And I go a lot harder on him and H3. I make H3 look like a complete idiot in my videos. I talk about him all the time. He's never done anything even close to this, which is hilarious. That's interesting, isn't it, right? I don't think I've ever had actually thinkers about it as well. I've got a million videos on my channel. People like to remind me all the time. Oh, you always talk about Brandon. It's like, no, I don't, bro. I have a podcast. I have over 600 episodes of my podcast where I talk about everything apart from comedy stuff. I only talk about the comedy stuff on this show, the random show. And I want to have my full time thing be the fucking podcast. But clearly people care about the comedy stuff more than the podcast is based on my view numbers. So I do what the people tell me to do. But if you actually count the videos I've got on my account, I would say over the 2,000 videos, the 3,000 videos I've got on my channel, maybe 10% are comedy stuff, maybe 10%. But of all those comedy ones, I've never got one strike down or one takedown notice from anybody. Maybe because I'm not as harsh as well. 
I think these guys go in a little bit more harder than I do. Um, they're a bit more, you know, they're, they're willing to kind of go out on a limb and say certain things, which I wouldn't necessarily say because I don't really care that much. And I try to be constructive in some ways or I try to give people the benefit of the doubt or maybe because I'm being a pussy and I'm riding the line or trying to ride the fence. I don't know. But in interesting, I've never got one, to be honest, from any of them. Because Tim was just on h podcast like a month ago, and he was talking about how Andrew Tate did not deserve to get banned and how censorship is just the worst thing ever and you should never try to censor anybody. But now I criticize him a little bit and he has my video taken down and now my channel is a strike. And if I get two more, I'm deplatformed. I'm kicked off YouTube Jesus. for good and all my videos are gone. So Tim's hardcore fans are just grasping at straws now, trying to think of any excuse they can to justify him taking down my video. Like his top mod on his subreddit is just straight up lying about my video and claiming I didn't add any commentary to it and it's not transformative at all, which is bullshit because I'm sure most of you watched the video, it had commentary in it. And if you look at any of my other videos, I think there's about 200 now. I think just two of them, I don't have any commentary because they're just like curb meme videos, but every one, every other one, just click on it, you'll hear commentary. And this is so ironic too, because the audio that I used in my video from Tim Dillon's podcast is still all over YouTube and without commentary and even longer i think maybe i used like a minute this is an eight minute clip with no commentary at all so it sounds like if i uploaded it without commentary it would still be up and it wouldn't have been taken down so mm, it's a little bit snitchy and narky well they got away with it and i didn't get away with it that's a little bit moist so these people are so confused they're just doing whatever they can to try to make tim Dillon look good but it doesn't seem like it's working also the youtube channel joke world he has the same clips i used in my video and his and his video is still up his channel is seven times bigger than mine his video had more views he used the same clips and it's still up tim Dillon had no problem with that so it's very clear this is not about me using his content. And the clips we used were from a Patreon episode, but that's still fair use. People are acting like if it's behind a paywall, then you can't talk about it, but that's not true at all. People react to paywall content all the time, like movies, TV shows, stand-up specials, if they're on like Showtime or HBO, or just Patreon content. I mean, I'm not uploading the whole thing. I uploaded like a minute, minute and a half in the middle of a video where I'm talking about it. People are acting like I just took his whole episode and uploaded it to YouTube, which I think if I did, it'd probably still be up. That's the... Can I say a controversial opinion? And maybe I'm a bit of a hypocrite and I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot here because something might happen to me. I don't give a fuck. I really don't. This to me has always been the lowest form of content creation that exists. The stuff that I'm doing right now where I'm watching other people and other shows talk about things and then I'm commentating on it in live, live, live or making an edited video and talking about what they're talking about. But essentially, if those guys don't speak about things, I have nothing to speak to you guys about because clearly you're only here to watch me talk about people who are way more famous than I am, way more successful than I am. That's kind of where it's entertaining and because they're successful and not, you know, they put on a pedestal, it's quite funny to laugh at them from time to time. But it isn't that deep. It's not like I'm fucking making a HBO show here. We're just fucking around. So the fact that my guy's thinking like he's created a seven part documentary, you know, exposing the truth of the fucking industry with all these really well resourced sources and information and it's a journalistic piece and stuff and he went and he traveled to places and he did loads of in on site interviews. It's no, you're just reacting to fucking middle aged men talking on podcasts about shit and putting it on your YouTube channel and monetizing it like I don't know. I don't necessarily I never think this is gonna last forever, which is why in my humble opinion, what my goal would be, my maximum goal, my maximum, maximum goal, right? Or my maximum goal is for this to be the thing that gets me out to do my own thing. This will be the thing that I want to be focusing on. This, my podcast, where I talk about cultural things like new stuff where i review collections where i talk about the clubs that i go to the holidays that i've been on where i maybe review a show whatever it may be this stuff is the stuff that i want to that i'll be willing to die on the hill of if i review the baby and ape collection and they flipping took down my video i'd be distraught because i'm look i'm reviewing your thing i'm doing you know i mean this is what i would fucking like to do but i can't because everybody going to cancel the comedy stuff but who cares if they take down a fucking brendan video or like a brain callum video i get it do you know what I mean? You're essentially I'm laughing at them, right? <laughs> I'm 
course you wouldn't like it. I don't expect you to like it. But it's not... I don't know, man. I just... I don't know. It's just... I guess maybe because I don't have it, maybe maybe because I don't have as many views as those guys, because those guys get way more views than I do on their on their comedy base, on their comedy type stuff that they're doing, right? Like even this one that this guy's doing now, he already has like two thirty two thousand views on his one. It's only came out the other day. I don't necessarily get all that kind of stuff, but I don't know. It's just it sounds a bit whiny maybe because it's just me as a person i'm not gonna get on here and start whining you gotta take my video down i'll fight it behind the scenes or maybe you might send a counter notification or something i don't know whatever i don't think i'd ever be bothered to do that i might do that but that's the most i'm gonna do i'm not gonna try and rally people around to fight this battle for me to have the right to have the ability to take a piss out of people i don't know i just I don't know. Maybe I'm in a minority here and I'm probably shooting myself in the foot and I should be more for the creators and I should be maybe fighting, you know, their case a little bit more. But I don't know, man. I'm just a little bit nonplussed about this shit, really, to be honest. But let's continue. I'm a Patreon episode, but that's still fair use. People are acting like if it's behind a paywall, then you can't talk about it. But that's not true at all. People react to paywall content all the time, like movies, TV shows, stand up specials, if they're on like Showtime or HBO or just Patreon content. I mean, I'm not uploading the whole thing. I uploaded like a minute, minute and a half in the middle of a video where I'm talking about it. People are acting like I just took his whole episode and uploaded it to YouTube. Which I think if I did, it'd probably still be up. That's the crazy part about it. Like Twitch streamers, they'll react to full movies, full TV shows, barely add any commentary, and the movie company that produced Twitch isn't YouTube. Produced the movie, doesn't even do anything about it most. Oh, YouTube isn't Twitch. It's the time. They're not even petty enough to try to do anything to take down their video or strike their channel or whatever. And there are YouTubers like Ralph the Movie Maker who just reacts to scenes from movies and heavily criticizes them. And for the most part, I think he's fine because it's fair use. He's changing the content. It's his content. It's transformative. So for the most part, he doesn't get in trouble. I mean, I'm sure he's had to deal with something once in a while, but most of these companies don't care because it's not that big of a deal. In my channel, I only have 20,000 subs. I played like a minute and a half maybe of Tim's Patreon content that's still all over YouTube. And that's a big deal. People are acting like I'm taking money from Tim Dillon. Are you fucking kidding me? Tim has actually gotten money from my videos because one time I reacted to one of his podcast clips that was on YouTube and he claimed it and got all the revenue for it. And I didn't really care at the time, even though it was a lot of money at the time for me. Like I think it was about like 200 bucks maybe I could have made off that video. But I really didn't care that much. I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll just move on. I think I might have made like one tweet about it just because I was surprised to see him working with Bent Pixels, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And if Tim like really had a problem with me reacting to his Patreon content and that was a big problem for him, which it isn't because it's obviously still all over YouTube, but if it was, he could have easily just claimed the audio from my video and then my video would have been taken down, but I wouldn't have gotten a strike and it would have let me remove the audio, which I would have no problem doing. I would have just done that and then left the video up. It wasn't that important to the video. I did that a few times with Brendan Schaub, but Brendan Schaub hasn't even stooped this low with my channel. It's crazy. Tim went for the jugular here and he gives me a strike. Now if I get two more, my channel's gone and I'm just off of YouTube. So I saw somebody actually posted the community post that I made on here to Tim Dillon sub and whoever did that, I really appreciate it. I'm glad some people understand what's going on here. And actually for the most part, I think most of these comments supported me. So that's really good to see. But of course, that moderator that I was talking about earlier, he's just in there trying to gaslight people into thinking that I just uploaded a straight clip from Tim's Patreon and added nothing to it. Like, let's see what this guy says. He says, this is not fair use. It was just a clip, no transformative content. It's literally what the DMCA system was made for. No, it was made for videos like this. Tim could actually take this down. He would have the right to do it. God, these people are so confused. And then of course, somebody's like agreeing with him. He's like, I mean, he added no value to it. No commentary or anything. Literally just posted a part of the video. How are they saying this for a fact? Like what the hell is going on here? Then the mod said, correct. He did not add to it. That does not fall under fair use and is why the dispute did not work for OP. I haven't tried to dispute it yet. These people are so out of it. Unlike for instance, WATP, he uses huge amounts of paywall content and I don't know what he's saying. Pretty sure there was content added to the video. See, this person right here is making some sense. It was just like WATP does. I looked through his channel and all his videos have commentary. I think he might be off here. And then this guy gives the best response. I've got the word of one internet stranger with yes, one with no. Will anyone learn the truth? Who cares? So after all that, he's just like, ah, oh, whatever. Who cares anymore? You know, I don't, who, who knows who to trust? He, he realized he is wrong and now he's just like, ah, oh, who cares? So yeah, you could tell he's really winning here. He's doing a good job. And then I also found this response to my tweet that I thought was pretty funny. This person said, it's the same as if you took a camera into a movie theater, recorded the movie, then transformed it into something different. You can't get away with the fair use when you illegally record the video. 
When the hell did Tim Dillon and his fans become Karens? Like, what the hell is going on here? This is just the most petty shit ever. Like, dude, you can take Tim's balls out of your mouth. The guy's making $200,000 a month just on Patreon. Like, oh, this poor guy, how's he gonna survive with me, a channel with 20... Mentioning how much Tim makes in an effort to plead your case that your video shouldn't be taken down whilst also complaining that you lost out on 200 pounds per video is hurting my brain. Really hurting my brain. Like, should we be caring about this? Is this something that you should be maybe dealing directly with Tim about? Maybe contacting him directly, seeing if you can maybe start a dialogue and maybe understand where he's at. Maybe talk about this and figure out where the solution is. If there isn't one, move and pivot. I don't know. Like, this is weird. Maybe he's having a moment. Maybe Tim's just going for a strop because he's still feeling the the fucking the the pains of breaking up with Ben Avery, which has kind of damaged the pod. I haven't listened to it since Ben actually quit. Weird, isn't it? Like that's another thing as well. People don't really mention a lot about these podcasts that I think the creators also don't really bear in mind. I think think about it, right? How many of you guys actually listened to Joe Rogan podcast since he went to Spotify? I was a big fan. I've been listening since the 400s and I can't think of the last pod on Spotify I listened to in full. I just see the clips or I maybe move around on the Spotify app from here to time to time. But I can't remember the last time I did listen to a full show like when I did previously. Like I think these podcasters, they underestimate how much people change their habits when something changes about the show. So when Joe moved to Spotify exclusively, I'm sure he just lost a bunch of people because he's not on their main page anymore on YouTube when they log in. They don't see him live streaming his shows anymore on there. So they just jump away and just forget about it. And I guess the same thing happens um, with uh, Tim and the uh, fucking podcast. A lot of people love Ben Avery. They love these little giggle in the background and they kind of, you know, tied Tim and Ben together as part of the show. So when Ben leaves, it kind of takes away half the show, half the reason for watching it. So you stop checking it out. And they don't really understand that, I don't think, these comedians. I think they just think, oh, yeah, I'm the star. It doesn't matter who's around me and who's doing help. If I'm the star and I'm here, it's going to be okay. But it's like, no, you're suffering, actually. People are not going to watch it because um, they feel like the full show isn't there anymore. But let's finish this two days to try thing and move on because I'm bored about this. I don't, yeah. 20,000 subs talking about a minute long clip from his Patreon. Like, if you think that somebody watched my video, then they're like, oh, well, there's no need for me to subscribe to his Patreon. I just got his content for free here. You're a fucking idiot. So there's actually another small YouTuber that had one of his videos taken down and he got a strike, I believe, from Tim. His name is CJ Brown and he brought this up on Tim's subreddit and some people like were not having it. This is one of the guy's response. He said, you tried to talk shit using material that is behind a paywall. Now you're bitching about getting your dumb video removed and think playing Reddit lawyer is going to change something. And then CJ basically explained that he's allowed to do it as long as he adds commentary or criticism or whatever. And he said, don't you think for all the shit Tim talks about, he should be on the side of the small YouTuber making a video about him, which is definitely true. Tim rants about this shit all the time. And this guy's response is absolutely hilarious. And I love his name too, his username, because this fits him perfectly. Right Wing Redact. This is his response. Seems like YouTube disagrees. That, that's the response. How the hell is this a Tim Dillon fan? It's just like, oh, well, if your video got removed, that's YouTube's choice. They disagree with you, so there you have to deal with it. Like, Tim spends so much time ranting about these social media companies and big tech and censorship and everything, and how, like, Andrew Tate, Alex Jones, Steve will do it. They shouldn't have been deplatformed. And now they're acting like YouTube always makes the right decision and you can't complain about it. It's like, hey, YouTube took down your video, so that means there's a good reason you must have screwed up. Like, what the hell is going on here? It's like we're living in the twilight zone. And it's so funny because a lot of people have been speculating that the reason Tim and his producer like had the breakup and he left the podcast and everything was because of this argument they had about Steve will do its channel. When his channel got taken down, he posted on Instagram, I think about it. And Tim's producer made a joke and like called Steve racist or something. And Tim was like really pissed about it. And he's like, dude, this is not the time. This is a serious thing. His video, his channel just got removed. This is terrible. But now Tim removed my video and gave me a strike. So now I'm a third of the way there to being deplatformed. So he obviously doesn't care that much. Okay, let's stop. Look, I understand, man. My guy has made, you know, big up two ladies to try. I hope you figure it out and you work it out and you get your strike removed and whatnot. It's not cool to see small YouTubers get basically bullied and stuff. I get it. And I understand, you know, being a YouTuber and now he's at the point where he's probably making a decent amount of money on his on his YouTube channel. The AdSense is pretty decent and it's maybe 
his his entire livelihood or maybe part of his livelihood to have seen that being taken away from you from somebody who purported to be a free speech advocate is probably hurtful and really confusing and really scary i get it i really do but i honestly do think something like this considering that it's kind of come out of left field i don't think any of us would have guessed that tim would do something like this so it's kind of something that kind of seems our character i would say that it's probably best to just contact the guy directly and see what's actually going on because i bet there's more to this than meets the eye and it probably has a lot more to do with fucking ben leaving the show and tim's changing person because a lot of people are saying it on the subreddit people have been saying subreddit and i've noticed it myself i've not really i listened to part of the new episode recently that just dropped on patreon it's like 45 minutes long it ends weird the volume's not really good the producer they've got now is fucking shit but in general right like there's clearly been a change in tim um, even that interview you had with Andrew Tate, people didn't really like on the subreddit. So he's going through something. I don't know what it is. Maybe he's bored. Maybe he's just evolved into this cunt that he's always been. Because that's something about Tim that you have to be honest about. Even though I'm a fan, he's always kind of, you know, been very honest that he's a piece of shit. Like he's always been honest about being a piece of shit. And he's always been honest that he wanted to just get rich and famous. And he obviously did that by kind of picking back in off the back of Rogan and using those appearances on Rogan to really propel his career to the next level. And he's also been able to, you know, do it still kind of being himself. He doesn't really suck up to a lot of the LA comedians. He's kind of somebody without a home, really, even though you associated him with the fucking New York scene, he's kind of in his own little island. So, um, he's always kind of been saying you know from his time of whatever he's into in terms of his extra curricular affairs in terms of buying houses and going to restaurants and enjoying the finer things in life he's always wanted to kind of extract as much as he can from comedy and he's kind of done it now as, as the guy too late to try mention this guy makes makes basically near fucking 250k per month on patreon alone not including what he makes on adsense or his podcast not including what he gets from doing his comedy tours and going up on stage and shit he makes bank so clearly he's in a good financial position and you know he's at the point where he cancels shows where he doesn't feel like going anymore and shit so he's living life pretty well so maybe this is always going to be his end point he was always going to turn into this guy but i do think me personally that there's an option to kind of figure this out but i think it really does require this guy reaching out to tim directly and finding out a way that they can actually communicate and talk about it because i don't think these videos are going to work because if anything we know about tim especially if he feels like he's smarter than the person that's speaking to him that's trying to give him a dressing down trying to get him a telling off he's going to double down and triple down so i don't think these videos are going to change much but i think a conversation behind the scenes probably would but you know, what do I know in it? What do 